Welcome. This video is going to talk about the concept of stoichiometry. So stoichiometry is defined as the study of the quantitative relationships between amounts of reactants used and products formed by a chemical reaction. It's based on the idea that atoms can't be created or destroyed, what we call conservation of mass. So the idea is that if you know what you start with, how many uh, grams of reactants you have, you should be able to predict how many grams of product you can produce. Or if you know how much product you need to produce, you should be able to calculate how much reactant you need to start with. And the reason this would be important in industry should be pretty obvious, that you need to know how much product you need to be producing on a daily or weekly basis and how much reactant that's going to require. So the basics of stoichiometry is that you have to start with a balanced equation, and then that balanced equation allows you to calculate the mass of reactants or products because it's telling you two different things. It's telling you the elements or the ingredients involved in the reaction, and it's telling you the amount or the number or the ratio of all the substances to occur. So I think of it like a recipe. If you're baking cookies, your ingredients would be things like flours and eggs and butter, but the amount would be the one cup of sugar, the two sticks of butter, the three eggs. So there's two different things being told to you with the recipe, and that's true with the chemical equation also. Now, unfortunately, the amount is the number of atoms or molecules, or we can think of it a whole bunch of atoms and molecules at a time by thinking of it as moles, but it's still the amount used. And we don't have a piece of equipment that can automatically tell us how many atoms or how many moles we have. Instead, what we use is a balance typically, or sometimes a graduate cylinder, and it tells us the mass or occasionally the volume we have. So we constantly have to convert between mass and moles. So for example, if we look at this equation, it says balance the above equation. So I see I need, um, well, I'm just going to cut to this, and if you balance this yourself, hopefully you would find out you need a 4 here, you need a 3 here, and you need a 2 here. So then it says interpret the equation in terms of atoms or molecules. So a few reminders. An atom is all alone. There's no subscripts, no neighbors. So when I look at this balanced equation, aluminum exists as just an atom. That's true of metals. And then um, molecules or formula units are just compounds of covalent things. We call them molecules, or ionic compounds are called formula units. And molecules and formulas are more than one. There's a few atoms bonded together. So O2 is considered a molecule, and Al2O3 is a formula unit. So number two, interpret the equation in terms of atoms or molecules. I would say four atoms of aluminum react with three molecules of oxygen to produce two molecules of aluminum oxide. So if we go ahead and advance to my next sheet here, if we do this, if I write it out, four, three, two, again, interpret the equation in terms of atoms or molecules. I would say four atoms of aluminum that plus sign means reacts with three molecules of oxygen, and you can write out the names if you would like, to produce two molecules of aluminum oxide, Al2O3. So the number three says interpret the equation in terms of moles. Well, in terms of moles, it's not going to change a lot because a mole is just a whole bunch of atoms or molecules at once. So this is really telling me four moles of aluminum react with three moles of oxygen to produce two moles of aluminum oxide. So again, really what um, the book and I'm trying to get you to think about here is when you look at a chemical equation, instead of just reading 4Al plus 3O2, arrow 2Al, 2O3, you should actually be thinking in your head this means four moles of aluminum reacts with three moles of oxygen and produces two moles of aluminum oxide. 
be thinking about these ratio amounts. And then the third part, to interpret the equation in terms of mass, this is a little bit different, so let me scroll up here. I have four aluminum. So the other big concept in stoichiometry is this idea of mole ratios. And that's what the balanced equation gives you, is it allows you to set up a ratio between any two components, reactant and reactant, reactant and product, product and product. But it's a ratio between the number of moles for any two of the components or substances in a chemical equation. And we use them as our conversion factors to predict something about another component. So I know how much reactant I'm starting with. I can use a mole ratio to predict how much product I'll get. It's really the key to stoichiometric calculations. So for example, I've got my same balanced equation here. And my question says, what are the six mole ratios for this equation? Well, if I want to find out how much aluminum I needed, I could find out how much aluminum I needed compared to how much oxygen I'm starting with. And I'd set up this mole ratio. Or I could find out how much aluminum I need compared to how much aluminum oxide I'm going to produce. And that would be this ratio. Or I could be looking at how much oxygen I need compared to the aluminum that I start with. Or I could look at how much oxygen I need compared to the aluminum oxide I want to produce. Or finally, I could be focused on how much aluminum oxide I'm going to produce compared to how much aluminum I start with or compared to how much oxygen I start with. But you notice, if I want to know how much aluminum I need compared to how much aluminum oxide I'm going to produce, that would be a 4 to 2 ratio or I'd be doubling my amount. But if I want to know how much aluminum oxide I'm going to produce compared to how much aluminum I start with, that would be just the opposite. I would be cutting it in half. And there's a big difference between doubling your amount and cutting it in half. And that's why it's so important to understand molar ratios and be able to set up the correct one. For example, it says, which mole ratio would you use if you had a known amount of aluminum? So this is what I have. I'm going to slide this up a little bit. Slide it that far, I guess, so we can still see. I have aluminum. Doesn't matter how much, so I'm just going to put X moles of aluminum so I know that that's what I have. I want to predict the amount of aluminum oxide. So what molar ratio should I use? That means I should be putting moles of aluminum oxide over moles of aluminum. So as I just talked about, this means it's going to be 2 over 4, or I'm cutting my amount in half. So this is the molar ratio I would use to make that prediction. So let's try it here. If you have the equation, 2 potassium chlorate, 2 moles of potassium chlorate, decomposed to give you 2 moles of potassium chloride and 3 moles of oxygen, first of all, you're asked to write all molar ratios for the above equation. Now, I'm not going to ask you to do this very often in your problem set, just enough to get you used to the idea that there are several molar ratios available in any given equation. So 2 moles of chlorate compared to 2 moles of chloride, or 2 moles of chlorate compared to 3 moles of oxygen, or 2 moles of chloride compared to 2 moles of chlorate. Now, a common question is, can you simplify these to 1 to 1? Sure you can or 2 moles of chloride to 3 moles of oxygen. And finally, I can be looking uh, to find out how much oxygen I have compared to the chlorate or the oxygen compared to the chloride. So there's my molar ratios for this equation. Which ratio should you use if you have a known amount of potassium chloride and you want to predict how much potassium chloride? 
So that means I want to know about chloride compared to chlorate. So this is my want over my have. So when I look down below, the equation that corresponds to or the ratio corresponds to is this one right here. Now in this case, if you flip-flopped it with this one over here, not going to be a big deal because they happen to be the same ratio. But that is not generally the case.